So in the discussion of stagflation, it I think behooves us to kind of start by trying to figure out what exactly it is, how to define it, because really other than like one period really in history when a British uh, politician coined the term, it's been something kind of amorphous that um, a lot of people have talked about in the past year. Even if you just kind of look at different Investopedia, Oxford Dictionary, uh, you search it online, you're going to find different definitions of stagflation. Some say it requires a sharp rise in unemployment. Some say it requires uh, persistent inflationary prices. But the one thing I found that all the definitions have in common is that it involves high unemployment. So in our conversation, we want to start, I think, by trying to have a definition, figure out if maybe right now there are some criteria that might meet the definition of stagflation. Then we'll kind of break it apart, think about the stag component, think about the deflation component, and then maybe how to deal with that. We were talking earlier, Nancy, so I'll kind of give you the ground first here about the last year. Uh, as we go into 2024, 2022's bear market of bonds down, stocks down, a lot of people threw around this term stagflation. Um, and I guess if we think about it, without any nominal levels required. Like if in stagflation doesn't require an unemployment level of five, six, seven percent, then is it possible we have seen some version of that here kind of within the last couple of years? Do you think that's a fair kind of starting point in this discussion? Yeah, I think um, it's a great point. It's a pleasure to be here with my esteemed panelists today and at this conference. And we really appreciate um, your focus for those of you joining uh, in the audience. Thank you. Um, yeah, I definitely think, you know, we could look at the price action in markets in 2022 and say, maybe we're experiencing some kind of stagflation being priced in then because the definition, you know, economics aside, it's typically higher prices and lower growth. And that's typically when stocks and bonds sell off together, which is exactly what happened in 22. So, you know, definitely to your point, we could we could have already had a period of stagflation. I think that's really important because there is uh, in markets, there are nominal levels. A company reports earnings and did they meet that number versus how did their earnings change? When we talk about stagflation, I think there's a similar thing we have to establish from the ground level, which is does that definition require some very high level of unemployment? Does it require 9% inflation like we got last year? Or Peter, could it just be a period in which growth is going down and inflation is going up? Well, in a way, they're intertwined in that the, the inflation is what causes the stag. It, it, it's, the, it's the higher cost of living where wages don't offset that that creates the stag. It's it's the higher cost of doing business that reduces your profit margins that create the stag. So they are intertwined. I mean, there's this belief, particularly in Japan for 30 years, that you need higher inflation to create faster growth. No, you can have faster growth with, it's low inflation, it's actual legitimate price stability that is the foundation for healthy growth. So unfortunately, we have the situation right now with this dramatic cost uh, cost increase that, like I said, is creating the stack. When we think about just very recently, in the last couple months, technically, if you our unemployment levels are pretty reasonable right now. We're still below 4%. But I'm curious, almost from a chart perspective, Mike, if the unemployment level, which is kind of steadily rising right now, and actually since June, our CPI, if we go with CPI, it bottomed out and has been rising again for the last three and a half months. We've got an unemployment line that's slightly rising. We've got an inflation line that's slightly rising. Are they rising fast enough, big enough for us to have a real discussion about stagflation in the way that we might in 1970? Oh, we need a little, maybe pass over to Mike there. The, the inflation bounce is a tech path. And it's the base, simple fact of the base. We look at CPI, it's running just below 4%. Core, P PCE, employment cost index around 4%. That's double the Fed's target. But the recent bounce was because of a little spike in food oil and some other things, right? Look at the facts, look at the facts of this year. The load for CPI annualized this year is minus 3.1%. That's deflation. You know what the low was in 2008? about zero the high was 9.9 percent the difference is base 
we have still just, it was just July, we had the last, last rate hike. So what I see now is a classic monetary cycle that's similar to 1929 to 1930. It's spelled out in the book, Boom and Bust. Um, there's some other books spelled out in, in its classic Milton Friedman. We are heading to a severe deflationary reset. So let's start with one, I'm a commodity guy. So let's look at crude oil. The average price this year, $78 a barrel, was first traded in 2007. Imagine if we said that about the stock market. Now you do parts of the world, things like the Nikkei. You look at natural gas. The price of natural gas is the benchmark measure for heat, electricity, and fertilizer in this country. It's down 80% from last year's high. First trade in 1990. So severe deflation just starting to kick in. And let's remember the one main reason that started it was money supply. We took our money supply, we bumped it up M2, up 42%. Now, First from the end of 2019, it's only up 37%. Now it's negative, down, running minus 4%. The rules of all of the rules of pumps and dumps and liquidity are just starting to roll over. And I think what's going to happen within a year, we we'll get a normal recession, less the view we have from Bloomberg Economics. But to have a normal recession after the biggest pump in liquidity and the biggest dump in liquidity and hike in rates on a global basis is would be just kind of strange. We should get a normal type of similar, might be worse than 2008 night. But remember what happened is this is on the back of the longest period in the history of zero interest rates globally, maybe negative. And Japan has been 20 years, in Europe they've had negative rates well, and we've ripped the band-aid. So I'll just end with some facts. In this country, uh, container board command, you know, corrugated boxes, down about 10% from the peak. That's about the same velocity as 2008, right? When the recession started. Diesel demand is down about 10% from the peak. Unleaded gas demand is down 5% from before 2019. And natural gas demand is at the lowest industrial since 2007. So from a commodity guy, inflation guy, I see severe deflation kicking in. And there's one key thing that'll stop it right now, that's the stock market staying elevated. But if we get a normal correction in the stock market, that's a domino.